Good morning. I believe you are doing fine. And welcome you to today's class. In our previous lesson, we discussed on the process of egg formation in poultry birds. We explained the organs that are involved in the process of egg formation in poultry birds. Organs such as the ovary, the fibulum, the ethmus, the uterus, and the vagina. We discussed the function of each of these organs. We also learned about the structure of a fertile egg. The function of the components, rather, the components of the structure of the of a fertile egg. We discussed the shell, the shape of the egg, the membrane, the airspace, the albumin, and so on. We also discussed the main reproductive hormone and we learned, we explained hormone as a chemical substance that is secreted by the endocrine gland, that is the dotless gland, and their effect is felt from the part of the body. Where their effect is felt is different from where they are secreted. They are secreted in the endocrine gland. We listed some of these reproductive hormones, the progesterone, the estrogen, testosterone, among others. For today's class, we will be discussing on environmental physiology. Environmental physiology. We have a biotic component of the environment, that is the climatic factors of the environment. The temperature, the rainfall, relative humidity, light intensity. And this about a biotic component, these factors, they have effects on the growth and performance of farm animals. Now, let's look at these effects one after the other. Environmental physiology is a topic, as I've said earlier on. Now, let's see our learning objectives before we move to the lesson in details. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to, number one, divine environmental physiology and number two list and explain the effects of changes in environment on a growth b production c meat production and d egg production now let's see the definition of environmental physiology environmental physiology refers to the effect of the environment on growth and performance of farm animals. Let's pick the word environment first. Environment is the surrounding where animal lives. And physiology is the function of the form and part of the organ of, the, of farm animals. Now, environmental physiology refers to the effects of the environment on growth and performance of farm animals. In the environment, as I've said earlier, there are climatic factors such as temperature, wind, humidity, light intensity, etc. When these climatic factors are moderate, normal growth and performance of the farm animals are enhanced. But when these climatic factors are inadequate or they are lacking, there will be a negative impact on the growth and performance of farm animals. Now, let's see the effects of changes in climate on growth. The effects of changes in climate on growth. Number one, wind causes the spread of diseases. Diseases such as tuberculosis is an airborne disease. It can be spread when there is wind. And once it's spread and infects the farm animals, this will cause retarded growth, we hinder the growth of farm animals and can even cause the death of farm animals. Number two, high relative humidity affects food intake of farm animals. High relative humidity. Relative humidity is the amount of moisture in the air. So when it is high, it affects the food intake of farm animals. It affects the, the respiratory organs. 
it could can lead to the upper reproductive upper respiratory sorry it can lead to upper respiratory tract disease and this once the upper respiratory tract tract is infected the animal will not be able to take in food so high relative humidity affects food intake of farm animals number three high temperature leads to heat stress in animals heat stress is a condition called hypothermia and this occurs when the animal body temperature is greater than the temperature that the, that the animal can regulate itself. When the temperature, when the body temperature of the animal is greater than the normal body temperature of such animal, then it loss, it stress, rather it stress occur. Number four, high rainfall leads to the multiplication of tetras fly. Tetras fly is a vector that transmits the disease trypanosomiasis. And once this trypanosomiasis is transmitted to farm animals, it reduces their growth and can even cause death. Can even cause death of the farm animals. I believe you are following me. Now let's move to the next slide. Effects of changes in climate on reproduction. Effects of changes in climate of, on reproduction. High rainfall causes the chilling of young ones after perspiration. Pasturation, if you remember, is the process of giving birth of young ones or farm animals. So high rainfall, you know, during rainfall, the weather tends to be very, very cold. So high rainfall causes the chilling. So it, 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 it makes the young young animals to shiver, to chew after perspiration and can even lead to death. Number two, high temperature decreases ovulation in animals. Ovulation is the process whereby the ovary releases an egg. So when the temperature is very high, the process of ovulation will be decreased in farm animals. Also, high temperature leads to low, low rates of conception in farm animals. Once fertilization does not occur, then conception cannot come into place. So high temperature leads to low rates of conception in farm animals. It reduces spermatogenesis of male animals. Spermatogenesis is the formation of the sperm cells. So high temperature reduces the spermatogenesis of farm animals. It reduces the rate at which sperm cell is formed in male animals. High temperature can also cause abortion in farm animals. It can cause abortion in farm animals. And egg production reduces drastically at extreme temperature. When the temperature is at the extreme, then egg production will reduce drastically. And this would add this add adverse effect on the production of farm animals. Now let's move on. Effects of changes in climate on meat production. Effects of changes in climate on meat production. Dairy animals, they are animals that are bred mainly for milk production. Now, high rainfall increases the multiplication of tetras fly, which transmits trypanosomiasis in dairy cow, leading to low milk production. So when this disease, trypanosomiasis, affects dairy cow, then they will not produce milk effectively. High relative humidity favors the growth of disease-causing pathogens, which can reduce meat production in farm animals. High relative humidity also enhances the growth of disease-causing pathogens, the growth of disease-causing vectors, which in turn can reduce the production of meat in farm animals. Also, high temperature and rainfall do not favor the rearing of dairy animals. When the temperature is too high, the rearing of dairy animals will be difficult for farmers. And also when there is high rainfall, high rainfall also affects the rearing of dairy animals. Now let's move on. Effects of temperature on brooding of chicks. Brooding is the introduction of, of heat or temperature to chicks, like a day or two, eight weeks chicks. That is brooding. Now, the effect 
of temperature, the effect of introducing it on cheese is what we are going to discuss now. Temperature of 35 degrees Celsius to 39 degrees Celsius provides warmth for the cheese. Once the temperature between this degree, 35 degrees Celsius to 39 degrees Celsius, provides warmth for the cheese. Temperature of 35 degrees Celsius to 39 degrees Celsius also leads to proper development of the cheese. It makes the cheese to develop properly. High temperature makes cheese to pant and move away and sit with their mouth open. We have seen chicks who open their mouth and they begin to pant, gasping for air. So high temperature can make the chicks to pant and they move away to sit with their mouth open. Also, there is greater susceptibility to disease at both high and low temp temperature condition. When the temperature is high, there is a greater tendency that the chicks can be infected with diseases. And also, when the temperature is low, there is also a great tendency that the chicks will be infected with diseases. Now, let me show you the picture. This is broadening of chicks with overhead lamp. Broadening of chicks with overhead lamp. You can see these are the chicks here, and this is the overhead lamp here. So the overhead lamp supply temperature to the cheeks to the, using overhead lamp, broadening of cheeks with overhead lamp, using overhead lamp. Then let, let me share you another picture with you here. When there is no electricity, probably there is failure of electricity, a lantern can also be used to broad cheeks to supply it. You can see from the diagram, you can see the lantern there and you can see the cheeks. So this is how to broad chickens. Without electricity, the lantern can be used to supply heat to the chicks. Now let's move on. Effects of temperature on egg production. Number one, ideal temperature leads to better egg production. A moderate temperature results in better egg production. The high temperature is necessary for incubation of egg. The egg need to be incubated to form the cheeks. So it's required high temperature. Number three, extreme temperature decreases egg quality. When the temperature is at the extreme, that is too high, it decreases the egg quality. Number four, egg storage period is reduced under high temperature. Even when you buy egg, and you even store it where there is no ventilation, where air, air is not can't reach it, then the air can spoil. So high temperature reduces the storage period of egg. Then also high temperature reduces the hatchability of egg. The process of hatching the egg will be reduced when the temperature is very high. I believe you are following me. Now let's move on. How can we now control it or temperature? Number one, fan or air conditioner should be introduced to the poultry house. Fan or hair conditioner, fan or hair conditioner should be introduced to the poultry farm. So this will make the, 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 the poultry house to be evenly ventilated. The poor conductor of it should be used as moving sheets. The poor conductor of it should be used as moving sheets. So the moving sheet that will be used on the poultry house should be a poor conductor of it. Number three, enough windows or openings for ventilation should be provided. Enough windows and openings for ventilation should be provided in the poultry house. Vents should be provided at the rooftop. After the roof, at the space, the space should be left where air will be able to come in in the animal house. The roof heater or lantern should be used to warm buildings when it is cold. In cold weather, Room eaters or lanterns should be used to warm the building. So these are the ways to control heat or temperature in farm house. Then let's see effect of relative humidity on egg production. Number one, high humidity is important in incubation of eggs. In poultry, but require high humidity to incubate the eggs. 
It encourages the spread of diseases. High humidity encourages the spread of diseases and makes the animal to be infected with disease. Also, it causes feet to go moody when the moisture content is high. Then the feet in the animal house can go can go can go moody. There will be mud on the feet. Then it compounds its stress. Compound its stress. It discusses its stress as an hypothermia condition. Then, the lastly, low humidity induces rapid water loss from the bird's body and thus increases their water intake. There will be rapid water loss when the humidity is low, and this increases the water take of the birds. Now, let's see how we can control relative humidity. Number one, free ventilation should be allowed when the humidity is high. Free ventilation should be allowed which is totally out when the humidity is high. Number two, fixing humidifier or open trays filled with water to increase humidity. Humidifiers should be fixed or an open tray filled with water to be introduced to the poultry house. This will increase the humidity. And number three, spilling of water in poultry houses should be avoided to reduce humidity or dampness. So the poultry house, water should not be spilled on the, in the, or, or, or on the poultry house. So, so that humidity will be reduced by this or dampness. Now, let's move on. The effect of light on egg production. Effect of light on egg production. Number one, light makes objects visible. We all know that light, when there is light, we see the entire object in a particular room. So, also, light makes objects visible to the poultry box. It makes the box active. Light makes the poultry box active. Then also, direct light of high intensity causes stress to the eyes of the poultry box. Direct light. When the, when the light is directed to the eyes of the, of the poultry box, it causes stress to their eyes. Direct light of high intensity causes stress to the eyes of the poultry box. Number four, duration of light controls time spent at feeding, which regulates growth and the rate of Feathering. So, the duration of light controls the, the time that they will spend at feeding. When there is light for a particular period of time, the poultry birds will tend to eat because they will see their feet. So, they will eat, they will eat, continue to eat. And this regulates their growth and also the rate of feathering. Rate of feathering. Now, let's see how light can be controlled. Number one, Windows should be covered with dark clothes to reduce light intensity. The window of the, of the poultry house can, can be covered with dark clothes so that the light intensity can be reduced. Number two, in, in short day length, extra illumination should be provided. So extra illumination should be provided when the day length is shorter. And we have a shorter day and a longer night. So extra illumination should be provided. Yeah. Then, number three, parts of walls should be made of wire mesh or glass to promote lightning. So, here, yeah, the parts of wall, walls should be made of wire mesh. And this wire mesh or glass would provide illumination, illumination to the poultry house. Now, let me show you a picture. You can see this picture. You believe with me that this is a well ventilated poultry house. All what we discussed there is at the window, which brings ventilation. This is the vent here at the roof, roof, rooftop, rather, at the rooftop. You can see lights and you can see this is a very big poultry house where the chicks are. It's a well ventilated poultry house. Now, with this, we've come to the end of the class. Please, you can read more of this lesson from the uploaded notes i read more of this from the uploaded notes so let's see on the website on the school website let's see let's quickly go from by see a a recap of what we discussed so far environmental physiology is the topic 
and with divine environmental physiology. We also discuss the effects of changes in environment on growth, on reproduction, on milk production, and on egg production. We discuss the effects of temperature on burning of chips and how we can control light, relative humidity, temperature in poultry houses. Thank you. With this, we come to the end of the class. I believe you enjoyed the class. Please. Please read your notes. Take care and see you in the next class.